Welcome! This tutorial builds upon the previous tutorial of how to install Comfy User Interface for Stable Diffusion. The scope of this tutorial will be how to use ControlNet and Dynamic Prompts in Comfy User Interface. We'll begin by clicking the Comfy UI Manager icon here, and then we'll click Install Custom Nodes, and then we search for Dynamic Prompts. We install Dynamic Prompts Custom Nodes, the custom node having been installed, instead of restarting here in the user interface, since we rely on a virtual environment being activated, we can simply close and close and exit this tab and close this as well. Navigate back to Comfy UI and start with our batch file, which automatically activates the virtual environments. All right, let's open the URL. Here we are. Now we should be able to right mouse on a click, add node, dynamic prompts and random prompts. Now, before being able to reference any wildcard here in the text input, we need to of course have any such wildcard file referenced. Wildcards should be populated if we go to the installation directory of Comfy UI in the custom nodes and here in the Comfy UI dynamic prompts. And here we should simply add a new folder called wildcards. And here in the wildcards folder, as an example, it can be any text file and it can be called test.txt and then we open this and then we can do red, green, blue and save that. Back in the Comfy UI interface we can do uh, underscore underscore to reference the wildcard file and the file name is test without the extension balloon. And then, as you see, um, an ordinary negative and positive prompt will have the clip input here as well. Since the random prompt does not have a clip input, we will need to add that. So we'll add a node and add a conditioning and a clip text encode prompt. And this we can right mouse and click and convert the text input to an input node here. And then we can have the string output here to the text input and we can have the clip input to the clip output. This is of course the positive prompt. We can delete this one and position this here as well as positioning this here perhaps. And then make sure that the conditioning output gets into the positive input. And then we can actually test this. So we click Q prompt. And here we have a red balloon. And we'll Q once again. And a green balloon. And a blue balloon. And it should be random which one of these. So now it's with blue again. And now it is red. Yes, the wildcard itself function as it should. Very good. Now, instead of this rudimentary test wildcard with simply red, green and blue as inputs, we want to change this to a more refined collection of wildcards that we have previously done. And if we go back to the folder of the wildcards, any text file that is residing here will be referenced as a potential wildcard. In our original installation for the Vladmandic sd.next web user interface, we already have a selection of custom wildcards. So instead of copying this to the new directory and then having to make sure that any adjustments would be done on both copies, we can simply reference this folder as a symbolic link in this folder. The command in PowerShell to create a symbolic link might look a little confounding initially, but it's nothing too complex. We can open a text editor to make this a little more straightforward. This command is all in one line. It creates a new item and the path where this item is created is this directory and the name of the item will be the same as the folder name that we reference. The type of item will be a symbolic link. It means that in this directory there will be an item that points to the contents in this item, this folder, in this directory. So let's just copy this, Control c and of course you have to make sure if you have a previous folder that contains all wildcards that you want to reference with a symbolic link, you have to make positively sure that both directories are exactly as they are for your specific installation or pair of installations. Since these are verified to be correct for this computer, we can control C to copy this and then we'll do Windows key, PowerShell and then hold control and shift and enter. Then we open PowerShell as administrator. Yes. And here with this being copied, we can simply right mouse on the click and enter. 
And then we'll go back here to the wildcards. And now we see that in the installation for our comfy user interface and in the custom nodes and in the extension dynamic prompts, we now have a symbolic link. And if we double click on this, we see that the directory is still intact. It's as if we still are in the comfy UI directory. But if we actually edit this file and then add purple here and save, and then we'll navigate to the original file, the one that is residing not in the symbolic link, but in the original installation of the Vladmandic SD.next installation. And now we open this file, and we see that purple has been added. So even though this file is evidently only one file, it is symbolically linked, thanks to the parent folder being symbolically linked, in the new installation. That means that if we make any adjustments to these wildcard files, then any and all adjustments will be reflected in the actual data of any symbolically linked file and the actual original file. One good thing to know about symbolic links, at least in File Explorer, is if we go up to wildcards here and we see here our symbolic link, if we delete this, then we actually can delete that, but rest assured, the original file structure still remains. So deleting a symbolic link will not delete the contents in the linked directory. We'll create that once again. So up key and enter. And here we have it. And it still functions. Very good. Back here in the Comfy UI interface, we should also, for flexibility, instead of relying on having a baked way here in the checkpoints, we should right mouse on the click, add node, add a loader and load a way. And then we can click here and then we can choose this one, the 840k EMA pruned. And then we can have that as the way input there instead. That means that if we change the checkpoint from one that has a baked way to one that does not have a baked way, then we have a way explicitly loaded here for the way decode node. We want to use control net here as well. So let's right mouse on the click, add node, loaders and load a control net model. And if we click here, we see that we have lots, but we can try here the depth one. And we have the control net model for depth, very good. And then we can add a node and we could add uh, conditioning and apply control net advanced. And then let's see, the control net that we want to use is the depth one. And the conditioning of the positive prompt should be here. I think we should reorganize this. Let's see if we move this to the right here. And then the control net will be applied model here the negative conditioning will be this and then we'll continue to the positive and the negative here we want to load an image so we can right mouse on the click and add node and add an image and we can load an image and then we should change this from the default one to perhaps this one so then we can simply copy this directory and input it here and then we have it there and open and then this one is produced in Blender with black being nearest and white being first away. And the control net depth model has been trained the opposite way. So let's make sure that we add a node and image and invert the image. And this image should then be our input for the image here for the control net. Then we should make sure that the positive prompt, which uses dynamic prompts, and the negative prompt, which is general, that they are adjusted to be appropriate for this workflow. So we'll go here to Rhino Grasshopper, then we can copy this and input it there and delete the last line there. Very good. And then the same for the negative one. and delete the last line there, very good. And then we can test by queuing one of these, and it looked like this, not evaluating the visual or aesthetic result of it, but simply seeing that the control net depth model is definitely working, very good. And then we can go here and change the batch size of the latent images. How many of these images with random noise with a resolution of 512 times 512 that are generated per batch and then here, if we activate extra options, we can change the batch count, how many batches of these five that are generated. So perhaps we can do five as well for a total amount of 25 images. And then we can queue. And now with all of these 25 images, five batches of five images have been generated. We can go to the output directory and here we see the generated images. 
While the control depth model is evidently working, we see that there is very, very little difference between the individual images in terms of aesthetics and architectural styles, etc. And when investigating in the command prompt, we also see no values found for wildcard and then these four. Let's see here if we actually do like this. In the positive prompt, we can start with, <laughs> let's see here, so as to make this really, really accentuated. So with a very, very high weight, we see if the test wildcard still works. No, here we see that everything turns very, very red. It did find, however, <laughs> the red one, but it used the same for all of these. For the random prompts, we need a batch size of one, because otherwise all of these in one batch will have the same wildcard input. So now if we increase the batch count instead to five, so generate five batches of one image. Click Q, so blue sky, green sky, blue sky, red sky, green sky. Very good. Having no recollection when we last saved and exited the program, we can actually do like that. We can save this workflow 240414 underscore control net and dynamic prompts. And then we can close this and we can exit this and we'll see if we start it again. Open the URL and last was loaded here. Then we'll see here, we can actually test to do this and we'll do extra options and a batch count of five and Q. This evidently works now. So the fault that I did was simply not to reload the program after having added the wildcards via symbolic links. Yes, now this works, it's evident. And we have of course, <laughs> we of course have to get rid of the test prompt here with a test sky here. So now if we remove this and Q again, this looks much more promising in terms of variation due to the dynamic prompt wildcards being used. Very good. Now we have gotten it to work, we can save it. And 240414 underscore architectural dreamscape. And then we can perhaps do a batch of 250 and answer the telephone. And there we have it. All 250 images generated and every each individual image having sufficient variation between images so as to make more probable that some aspect of it might inspire you in how to proceed with your architectural projects. This concludes this tutorial on how to use ControlNet and dynamic prompts with Comfy user interface for stable diffusion.
Thank you for your time.